Shalom falava ki orana malu ilalai tinakoto katoa. Welcome. My name is Glenn Donaldson. I'm the manager, managing director of, for BGIS New Zealand. BGIS is pleased to support our way forward, the voice of business, Fox Pulse, as we see a strong alignment between our business and the topics in this series. Desired to inspire, this series consists of short webinars with the moderated live discussions with leaders from a cross section of industries. The series will be an opportunity to learn from industry leaders about transformations of their businesses, resilience and leadership during challenging times and future plans on sustainability, efficiency and innovation. In the Vox Pop today, the Circle and BGIS, BGIS are delighted to hear from Sophie Maloney, Chief Executive Officer of Sky New Zealand. Thank you for joining us, Sophie. Sophie is an accomplished curator. Sophie is, a, is an accomplished New Zealand media leader who brings deep international experience to the Chief Executive role. She joined Sky UK in 2003 and has held senior commercial, legal and strategic strategic roles at Sky New Zealand, Sky UK, Sky News Arabia, Abu Dhabi Media and OECN. <laughs> Sophie returned to New Zealand with a family in 2018 and prior to being appointed Chief Executive was the company's Chief Commercial Officer. Sophie is proud to lead Team Sky. She is deeply passionate about developing young and women leaders and ensuring Sky continues to bring amazing entertainment and sports content into people's lives. A reminder, people, we are on the record today and will share the recordings on our YouTube channel following this event. I will now pass you over to Sharon Lloyd, CEO of New Zealand for The Circle and our guest of honour, Sophie Maloney, to get our conversation started. Thank you. Kia ora, Glenn. Thank you so much for the lovely welcome and welcome to Sophie from The Circle as well. It's my pleasure to spend the next 20 minutes with you and really wanted to acknowledge that you are Sky TV's first Kiwi-born chief executive in nearly 20 years. So congratulations on that and the appointment. I really enjoyed at the time of your appointment hearing that you felt Sky should be celebrating the fact that it is a New Zealand company and that the company has a real role to play in New Zealand's cultural dynamic. So I'm excited to hear more from you today and we'll get into the questions. Um, and, you know, to hear more about your perspective and unpacking all of this. So to start with, of course, we can't get away without talking about the pandemic. How has Sky been affected by the pandemic over the last 18 months or so? Kia ora koutou, kia ora Glenn. Um, that was a kind, quite a lengthy bio you had to walk through, so my apologies for that. Need to make it a bit crisper and kia ora to you, Sharon. Really grateful for you to host me here. Uh, yeah, so look, we, Sky TV or Sky New Zealand, for those who don't know, um, we're a, we've traditionally been a PTV broadcaster delivering via satellite and now via broadband as well. And we have our Skybox and we have Neon, which is our in entertainment app, and we have Sky Sport now at this stage. So, um, you know, first up to say that um, save for 2020, which was an incredibly challenging year uh, for everyone, um, and Sky was no different. You know, our sport partners were suddenly staring down there being no sport. And we similarly had um, significant issues as we stared down a, a big bond repayment. Uh, we weren't sure how we were going to do that. So we ended up having to do a, uh, you know, a deeply discounted capital raise. Um, I can safely say that I have no intention of <laughs> going back there again or due diligence committees. They are no fun at all. Um, but otherwise, since then, um, you know, we're lucky. We're one of the fortunate businesses that delivers nationally to homes across Aotearoa, New Zealand, and into handsets with our apps, as I said. Um, and we consider it a real privilege. So, um, you know, we've continued to deliver content. Uh, we've had feedback from our customers to say that it actually has been a, a great source of companionship. Um, and also, you know, a bit of a window on the world to know that whilst we're, we're all locked away, um, people are still able to connect through our service. So um, overall, um, we're, in a, we're in a strong position. And I did just want to say, Sharon, um, you know, I'm hugely proud and grateful of our team. It's been incredibly challenging working on site, wearing masks or traveling around the country and for everyone else having to <clears throat> reside at home and be on screens for all of this time. So yeah, 
excited to have got, got us to this point. Hopefully Omicron moves on swiftly and um, we can crack on with, um, with living our lives. Uh, here, here to that. Well, I, I love the acknowledgement of the team and yeah, I completely appreciate that people are everything, particularly in these types of situations. Um, our household appreciated having Gold Rush during level four, <laughs> apparently was a highlight. <laughs> um, so, Very good. you know, reflecting on that, have any of your strategic priorities changed as a result of what you experienced during the pandemic? No, I mean, I, I think it's reinforced it actually, reinforced the role that uh, that we play. And we did learn, we learned that we could do things differently, um, which is enabling us to kind of address our address our cost base. For example, um, commentators calling off tube, what does that mean? Just off a screen, uh, rather than traveling to different places like the Northern Hemisphere. Um, no impact on customers, uh, but does help you save some money. But no, overall it's about, it has for me and I think the team reinforced the role that we play. Um, it's making us more focused. Um, and you know, ultimately, um, I do think it's a privilege to deliver the content that we do to all of the homes across uh, New Zealand and also um, through pubs, clubs, hotels and motels. You know, we have 7,000 different commercial customer relationships. Um, so, no, really the, the pandemic has helped remind us actually of the role that we do play and can play going forward. Yeah, nice. I did wonder about the commentators <clears throat> when they couldn't travel, how that was working. So that's good to hear. Um, so just following on from that, you recently shared that Sky's focus is to make it really easy for New Zealanders to have the best of their content opportunities delivered in one place. So how are you thinking about balancing the short term goals with the necessary investments and longer term growth and thinking about market disruptions and maintaining innovation? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's definitely about, um, for me, the longer term, um, you know, we've been um, in New Zealand for 31 years, um, and right now I'm grateful to be the custodian of the story, and I hope, you know, setting out the game plan for the next 31 to come. How are we doing that? Uh, we're very mindful um, of where we've been and how we, um, we're perhaps a, a bit of a one-track pony. Um, and perhaps not accessible to as many New Zealanders as we know we need to be, particularly with impacts on household wallets. So we're in the process of, and we're going to be bringing our new skybox into homes from the middle of this year. Uh, that is a big moment for us. It's been a long time since we invested in new technology in the home. And for me, it's going to reconnect us with part of our origin story, which was about bringing choice to Kiwis. Uh, but also ease, you know, when we had, we brought out My Sky Recording, pausing live TV and recording what you wanted was really phenomenal. And we want to connect back with that, uh, with this new box that will have your best of your free TV. Uh, we know how important news is, the six o'clock hour, um, as well as Sky surfacing all of our content and then your favorite apps, starting with Netflix. So really excited about what that is. And of course, we have Neon priced differently, um, a, a huge amount of entertainment content there, and Sky Sport Now. Um, again, Sky Sport Now, we had the Olympics pass for the Summer Olympics and then the Beijing Winter Olympics more recently. And again, we're pricing it in a way that we hope will open that up to more New Zealanders. And that's not to forget, Sharon, that we have Prime, our free-to-air channel, and we're really thinking about how do we continue to offer up content so no matter your household wallet, or you as an individual, you can experience and enjoy the amazing content that we have on offer. So um, just thinking about partnerships, and I know that's top of mind for people as well, probably a post-pandemic trend, are you investing to deepen your services through partnerships as well? And what does that look like? Can you share a bit more with us on that as well? Yeah, look, um, in my prior role as, as Chief Commercial Officer, I would before that, I called my, I had a very long title, but one of the words that was in there was partnership. Mm -hmm. um, I think partnership is, is vitally important. Um, before I talk about sport, if I can just take a moment to talk about um, our partnership with New Zealand On Air and the investment in local storytellers uh, and local content. You know, our most recent example that premiered on Prime and is also available on Neon is Raised by Refugees. 
Pet mm. Society is a local comedian um, and we're really grateful for that you know the investment by government through New Zealand on air on, on that type of storytelling we think it's a really important role and on the sporting side um, you know we talked about a rugby league deal that we secured last year which has a couple of key components one's the key broadcast rights but we also have a digital partnership which is about how do we innovate together to grow the audience and um, and share in the upside on that and a, and a closer to home example that we're really excited about is our new deal with the National Basketball League, whereby we've, we've decided to invest more directly um, with the franchises. So they've got certainty of um, income so they can bring in the best players. And what we've done is then we've secured all of the other rights so that all of the commercial rights in and around um, that important league uh, we can look to kind of grow the revenue pie for us and, and the sports code. So those are a couple of areas where I hope you can sort of see the importance of partnership um, for us now and going forward. Yeah, absolutely. I've heard brilliant things about Raised by Refugee. I haven't seen it yet, but I absolutely will watch it. So thank you for <laughs> reminding me. Very good. Very good. <laughs> So um, ESG and, and corporate social responsibility issues are also a top priority for leaders and we are hearing that's top of mind for the business community at the moment. So how are you thinking about putting your organisation into a position where you are contributing and leading on this as well? Uh, yeah, look, that's great. I mean, Glenn referenced my experience at Sky UK um, <clears throat> a long time ago now, but I always remember being struck by, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, how Sky UK took its corporate social responsibility very seriously and talked about investing direct in the Amazon rainforest as it was at the time. And more recently, they've been looking at their investment in helping clean up our waterways and oceans. Um, Sky New Zealand, uh, you know, we, we have, we've got a ways to go um, on, the, on the sustainability front. Um, we have some incredible talent in our organization who are very passionate um, and we're in a process at the moment of kind of assessing where are we, what does our footprint look like um, and, and I know it's vitally important to our investors to get that right. The other area for me on the corporate social responsibility front is um, a broader banner that we're calling Sky for Good and Sport for Good. Um, you know we partner with the Hullbergs and they've you know, had a lovely celebratory um, event of late. Um, and also we've, we're very mindful of <clears throat> the role that we have in um, women in sport, for example. You know, you talked about, um, or Glenn referenced at the outset, my desire to support uh, our wahine toa. Um, and I think, you know, Sky's role in being able to showcase talent in front of the screen like the likes of Ricky Swinnell. Mm. Um, I recall a, a male friend of mine saying, you know, she was really quite good. And I was like, well, that's the point. Yeah. Women just need an opportunity um, to showcase these skills. So we, you know, we already broadcast a lot of sport. I'm about to head to the ICC Women's Cricket World Cup game with the White Ferns this afternoon. Um, but we know that we can be doing more to create real household names out of some of these brilliant sports people, um, as well as supporting them behind the camera. And just one other, one other little one I wanted to just share with you on the Sky for Good um, mantle is that we have, um, we're a partner and have been actually close to 20 years with the special children's Christmas party. This is an event, um, runs a couple of times a year, but it's, it's called the Christmas party and it's for the underprivileged and underserved families um, and that's something I'm really happy that we're a part of and recommend it to any other businesses who are looking for something really good to invest in in the future. Nice yeah beautiful great great cause um, and just on the the woman piece and encouraging Wahine we are doing a Watch Woman Win study tour that we're working yes. together with Antonia Watson of um, ANZ and it's yeah brilliant to see women encouraging other women I love it. Um, yeah, no, so, I loved I love that series. Um, I think Antonia's phenomenal. So yeah, well done. Excellent. Um, now we're close to the end of time. So I wanted to ask you two things. Um, looking at leadership, we've talked a lot about resilient leadership on the Circles platform over the last <laughs> couple of years. Um, and during COVID and post-COVID, challenges facing leaders are unique. 
So how do you drive your team when you might not be able to predict or, you know, today or even tomorrow what might happen? Uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm one of those people who's super comfortable with things being uncertain. Uh, and I'm, you know, happy to be present and assess things as they come and, you know, accept that you can only control what you can. But I also recognize for others that having that lack of clarity and certainty can create real anxiety. So what do we need to do? We need to be as clear as possible um, about where we're headed. So setting the vision for Sky and then working with the executive leadership team to plug in the 90-day plans and give that roadmap, I know is important. But equally, I just think it's about being a really good human, you know, listening, uh, not judging, and understanding that people are all in different places at this time. Um, and so that's what we're encouraging our leaders to do, to, to continue to connect. Um, and one day soon, we'll be back in the office together, which will be great. We can't wait. Yes. And what about for you? You're you know, relatively new in the role. So what have you learned about yourself since becoming CEO? And I, I believe you travel from Nelson to Auckland for work. So how do you find your balance as well? Uh, yes, so I do um, live in Pokatu Nelson with my family and choose to commute. Um, that's how I, you know, I fill up my wairua and my spirit every weekend, particularly on a Saturday watching the boys sport. Um, and so that's one of my ways of, of finding balance. I also like to go for the odd, you know, go running where I listen to music and I have the conversations in my head that I probably <laughs> shouldn't in real life. It's just a really nice way to, to process and look, to the question about being a chief executive, um, I was told stepping into the role that it's a lonely place to be, um, which I found a bit confronting because I couldn't quite understand why that would be given that what an awesome place it is. But what it is, I do note, um, Sharon, is it's quite isolating. And so, you know, as much as I keep saying I want people to speak freely and be really honest, I do recognize I need to work harder to make sure that happens and that people have the comfort they need to do so. Because it's it's vitally important for me to have a team around me that know, um, I know they've got my back um, and, and they mine and I theirs so that that's the way we're gonna succeed going forward is that great teamwork. Yeah, beautiful, nicely said. I'm going to invite my colleague Dora Beer to come on who will formally thank you. Um, but personally, I just wanted to say thank you for being so open and honest. I really enjoyed chatting with you. Enjoy the cricket this afternoon. We'll be watching and cheering on from Auckland. <laughs> Kia ora, Sharon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sharon. And thank you, everyone at home, for joining us today for our first 2022 Our Way Forward, the Voice of Business Box Pop series brought to you by BGIS New Zealand. On behalf of the Circle, thank you so much, Sophie, for participating today. It was lovely to hear your story. And thank you so much for, to Glenn and the team at BGIS New Zealand for partnering the series. In our Vox Pop series, we are joined by Blair Turnbull, um, Chief Executive at Tower Insurance on the 25th of March. We'll also be joined by um, Chief Executive Officer of Food Stuff North Island, um, Chris Quinn, as well as National Party Leader, Christopher Luxon, and many more New Zealand um, business leaders to be announced shortly. This webinar is on the record and we'll be sharing the recording on our YouTube channel following the event. We look forward to welcoming you all very soon. Have a lovely Friday.